Hey, this is Mr. Perez. Today we're going to work on inequalities. But before we get started, we got to get out. Charlie, he better be radio. Hey, Charlie, what are you doing over there? Nothing. Today we're doing inequalities. Now, we are going to do inequalities on a number line. So, let's get our number line out right there. All right, Charlie. I'm going to put up our first inequality symbol and let's see if you can identify it. Here it is, right there. It's a crocodile. It's not a crocodile. There's no animals in mathematics. What? Anyway, Charlie, start paying attention here. Okay, see that symbol up there? Think of it as an arrowhead pointing to the right. To the right. Okay? Now, that symbol does represent is greater than. Well, if we think of it as an arrowhead pointing to the right, if something is greater than something else, it means it's to the right of on the number line. You'll see what I mean when we start doing our problems. Now, comes another one, Charlie. This is like, looks like an arrowhead pointing to the left. To the left. And that symbol actually represents is less than. So if something is less than something else, it means it's to the left of on the number line. Okay, to the left. Anyway, here's an equal sign with a line through it. And this symbol stands for is not equal to. That means it's not on the same place on the number line. Now, that symbol there is two cases, is greater than or equal to. If one of the two conditions is met, then the math statement will be true. Here we have a less than or equal to. Notice a little bar on the bottom. Okay? It's two conditions, is less than or equal to. And finally, we have this little squiggly line. It's not a dance move, right? That inequality actually represents is approximately equal to. We generally use that symbol when we round off numbers, like for rounding to the nearest thousands, we'll say it's approximately equal to 1.348 or something. Okay, rounded to the nearest thousands. All right, Charlie, let's do some problems. Here we go, right there. Answer true or false, now don't get scared. Here we go. Now, forget about that crocodile. Think about the number line, and let's think of to the right of or to the left of. So here we go. Think about it, and you'll get it right. Watch. Here we go. Right there. True. Very nice there. That's right, Charlie. See, the crocodile isn't going to work unless you know which one is bigger. In other words, which one is to the right of. So if you look at our number line here, negative 4 is greater than negative 5. Well, is negative 4 to the right of negative 5? Yes, therefore it is true. That is a true statement. Now some of you think, well, negative 4 is closer to 0 than negative 5. That's true. If it's closer to 0, it means it's to the right of negative 5, right? All right, Charlie, let's do another one. 4 is greater than 5. True or false? False. That's obviously false. 4 is actually less than 5. Look at the number line. It's to the left of 5, right? Okay. Now how about this one? Negative 3 and 2 sevenths is greater than negative 3 and 3 tenths. Ooh, this is a tough one. Now, when you deal with mixed numbers, you want to make sure the fractional parts have the same denominator and then place them on the number line and it should be clear to you if the statement is true or false. Okay, Charlie, well, what's the lowest common denominator for a 2 sevenths and a 3 tenths? 70. That's right. So the 2 sevenths will multiply top and bottom by 10. That gives us 20 sevenths, right? And the 3 tenths, we need to multiply top and bottom by what, Charlie? 7. That's right, and so that gives us 21 sevenths. Now let's place them on the number line. Over here, there's negative 3 and 20 sevenths, right? And now, watch what happens. Negative 3 and 21 sevenths is over here just to the left of it, right? Okay, now we can answer our inequality statement. Here it is, Charlie. Negative 3 and 20 sevenths is greater than negative 3 and 21 sevenths. True or false? True. It's true. That's right. Because negative 3 and 20 sevenths is just to the right of negative 3 and 20 seven, 21 sevenths, right? Very nice there, Charlie. Okay. Let's do another one. Negative 5 is less than or equal to 5. Now, there's two cases. As long as we meet one of the conditions, we're fine. Meaning we have the less than case or the equal to case, right? All right. So, Charlie. Negative 5 less than or equal to 5. True or false? True. That is true. Negative 5 is obviously not equal to 5, but negative 5 is less than 5, so we met that one condition, therefore we say it's true. 
All right, Sean. Now, let's do some more. Don't get scared. Seven is not equal to ten. True or false? False. That's true, right? What? Seven is not equal to ten. Look at the number line. If seven was equal to ten, it would be right in the exact same place on the number line, right? Both the seven and ten, but they're not. They're apart. So seven is not equal to ten. So that answer statement is true. All right, Charlie. Seven is not equal to seven. True or false? False. That is false, right? Because seven is actually equal to seven, right? If the statement said seven equal to seven, you would say true. But since the statement is saying seven is not equal to seven, we say it's false, right? All right, Charlie. Negative eight is greater than or equal to negative seven. Look right here, Charlie. True or false? False. Very nice there, Charlie. It is false. Okay. Now, negative eight is obviously not equal to negative seven and negative eight is not greater than negative seven, right? So we don't meet either of the two conditions, so our statement is false. Actually, negative eight is to the left of negative seven, therefore negative eight is less than negative seven, right? All right. Now, to this one over here, 11 is less than or equal to 11. Now, as long as we meet any one of the two conditions, our answer will be true. So true or false, Charlie? True. True, why is it true? Because 11 equals 11. That's right, because 11 does equal 11. Very nice there, Charlie. All right. Now, we're going to do some translations. Translate each word statement to a math statement, Charlie. So we're going to help you out here, Charlie. I'm going to turn on the uh, voice activation system for the computer, and it's going to help you out. Watch. OK, let's put up our word statement right there. 7 is less than 10. OK, let me turn on the system. OK, go ahead. 7 is less than 10. Very nice there, Charlie. So let me turn it off there. There we go. Now, 7 is less than 10. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, is this statement true or false? It's true. true. There we go. Now, let me put up another word statement. Now, look at the two word statements, Charlie. What's the difference? There's no is. That's right. That is very important. Okay. So let me turn on the voice activation system and then go ahead and read it. Seven, less than 10. Very nice there, Charlie. Now notice it's a difference now. See, the key word was is. Is less than is an inequality. Now, less than, that phrase indicates you're taking away, or it's a difference, right, or a subtraction. So seven less than 10 is 10 subtract seven, or it's the difference of 10 and seven. Now, Charlie, what is 10 subtract seven? Three. Very nice there, Charlie. So let's do some more. X is greater than 10. X is a variable. We're going to talk about variables very soon. All right, Charlie. So let me turn on the activation system and go ahead and read it. Go. X is greater than 10. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, we cannot answer this to be true or false unless someone tells us what the variable X represents, right? For instance, if x represents the number 11, then the statement would be true. If x represented the number 9, the statement would be false, right? We'll talk about variables very soon. All right, Charlie, now we're going to do another one. Again, what's the difference between the two word phrases? There's no is. That's right, it doesn't have the is. Now, let me turn on the system and go ahead and read it. Go, x greater than 10. Very nice there, Charlie. Again, it's an expression, 10 plus x. We cannot evaluate the value, we cannot evaluate the expression or find its value until somebody tells us the value of x, right? We'll talk about um, expressions in a little bit again. Okay, very nice there, Charlie. Remember, that word is is very important. Is greater than is an inequality, right? Greater than is a sum, right? So x greater than 10 is right there. So anyway, that's enough for now. We'll see you all again soon.